it is now and it's all getting ready and and things are already happening but it's moving people are now being banned from the web for writing things that are basically the gospel people have lost their jobs for right simply putting posting on their personal site what the bible says amazon just in those last two weeks started removing books censoring books basically a a writer this week who said she had been freed from sexual sin she was banned her book was banned hitler's writings are on the web but not that in california they came that close to banning by this the way the law was written banning the sale of Bibles and and enacting a law that would have ultimately eliminated Christian schools or Bible schools in the state it didn't pass but almost but there are other acts happening including the 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 push right now in the Democratic Party for the Equality Act, which it has a nice name, but it has a very dangerous effect on all religious freedom. Um, So much so that all Christian schools in America and Christian are in danger right now because of just a few little changes in the law and they will all be forced to make a decision to either give up what the Bible says or give up their funding which on which is about 40 to 60 percent of their funding which could end most religious education in America you need to be aware of it you need to pray in California I mentioned well actually just in the last few weeks they one part of their legislator passed a law telling pastors what to speak about and it would seem with all these things that you see, it would seem that, that believers are powerless against it and can sometimes feel like that. But in the book of Acts, they were also told what they could do and what they couldn't do. But they had to make a decision and they said, well, basically, if it's a question between what God says and what you say, we're going with God. We have to do the same thing. If it comes to that, we have to do the same thing. But we are not powerless. You can, we're going to, you know, we're, we're talking about the ways of man and there's powers in the ways of man, but that's not our kingdom ultimately. So I'm going to, I want to look today about the powers that you have that are given specifically by Messiah to his disciples. If you're a follower of the Lord, you are his disciple. And so Matthew 10 says this. Yeshua, Jesus, summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Now the names of the twelve apostles were, are, the first Shimon, Simon, called Kepha, Peter, and Andrew, Andreas, his brother, Yaakov, James, the son of Zabdi, Zebedee, Yochanan, John, his brother, Philip, and Bartalme, Bartholomew, Tomai, Thomas, Matthew, Matthew, the tax collector, Yaakov, James, the son of Alphaeus, Tadai, or Thaddeus, Shimon, the zealot, Simon, Yehuda, Iscaria, Judas, the one who betrayed him. These twelve, Yeshua, Jesus sent out after instructing them, don't go into the ways of the nations or the Gentiles, don't enter any city of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Freely you received, freely give. Okay. First thing. It wasn't that they were prepared. It wasn't that they it wasn't that they went to Bible school. None of them did. They were with the Lord, but he just now sends them out. And often the Lord, you know, a lot of things that are keeping us sometimes or keeping you maybe from fulfilling your calling is that, well, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Well, the Lord usually puts out before we feel we're ready. If you're going to follow God, he's going to put you out before you feel you're ready to do what he has you to do. And sometimes you have to just step out and you'll learn. You Most of it in the Lord is learning as you go. That's what he did there. He, he, he brought them. He just go out and do these things. Now there's no, there's no 
examples before that they were doing those things, but he said do those things, and God calls us to do things that we did not do, have not done, are not comfortable doing, not, not who we were, but now who we're becoming. So you have to step out. If you want to fulfill your calling, you have to step out in God. There's so much to do, but Messiah gives authority here. He gives a mission, but he doesn't give a mission without authority. He said at the end of the gospel, therefore go into all the earth. Why? He says, because all authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me, therefore you go. There's something about going on a mission for God, and I'm not saying just overseas. I'm saying yes, overseas, but here too, everywhere, going on a mission, moving forward in the Great Commission, where you are given a supernatural authority. When I've been on mission trips, I've saw this principle again and again. You see things that you don't see when you're not stepping out in God. I mean, we saw people who were maybe shy here, and they go on the mission field, and they are anointed with power. And their, their doors open. And we are, and it's, it's amazing. You know, and here's the principle. I once did a teaching on the private and the general, and it's simply this, that who has the most authority in, a, in an army? The general. Who has the least authority? A private. So that's it. God's the general. We're the privates. We don't have a lot of authority. Not in our will we don't. But if the general gives an assignment to the private, the private has the authority of the general. If the general gives a paper to the private to deliver, that, that private, as much as he's doing the will of the general, has the authority. The doors have to open. Everybody has to yield to that private. The same with you. We're privates, but if we're doing our own will, not authority. But if you're, the more you're doing the will of God, the more you are given authority, the authority of God, the king of kings, to do God's will. So the key is, get your life into His will. And get your life more and more into His will. And one part of being in His will is serving Him. If you're not serving in ministry in some way, you're not fulfilling the calling God gave you. You're not in the perfect will of God. It's just what He said. There's not people who are ministers and people who are not. Everybody's a minister in the Lord. We're here to equip you, but you are a minister if you're born again. And you've got an authority, but the, what is the ultimate will of God is the Great Commission. When he left, he said, this is what I will you to do. So the Great Commission is getting, the go getting people saved, spreading the gospel, healing, blessing. Giving them, that's what it is. That is. You want the will of God? Get into that. Because there's going to be a power and authority and a blessing when you go. And he said, as you go, the Greek tense there means it is continuous as you are going in going. The, you know, there's a thing about this. It's not just the special missions, but whatever you're doing, as you're just going in the Lord, there is a mission for you. There are opportunities everywhere you go. You go to the store, there's a great commission in the store. You may not be using it, but it's there. You go to the bank, there's a great commission there. You go on into a family reunion, there's a great commission. It may seem hard, but it's still there. Never forget that whatever you're doing as you're going, we're all on mission. You say, well, I'm not really a missionary. Yes, you are. If you're born again, you are. You say, well, I don't know what the mission field is. The mission field is called planet Earth. That's your mission. You are born of heaven. You are on Earth, not because you're home, because you're on mission. I remember once I was getting shoes, and I had to get shoes, and I went to a store, um, went to Sears, I think, and there was one step up. I usually would go to Walmart, but I was being, I was being uh, fancy that day, and, and, and I went to a saleswoman. She's looking at me strangely. She's getting me shoes, and I, she, says, I, she says, do I know you? I said, well, I said, well I, I've seen you. I said, okay, maybe you watch television. I said, yeah. I said, and, and, and we're talking, and turns out it's an Israeli. As a real woman who was into the occult and all these things like that. But she seems real cautious. But I talked to her. But I give her a card. I had, a, I had a, like a God loves you card. We got to make them up again. And I gave, it, I gave it to her. And I'd never heard of her. She was very kind of cautious. But months later we get a letter. It's from the woman who gave me the shoes. And she, was, she looked at the card. She watched me on television. And she says, I have to come out. She comes out. She gets saved. And she became part of the congregation when she was here. 
Everywhere you go, there's a great commission. You won't, there's like, it's like, there's an adventure to it because if you take the first step, it leads to the next step and the next step and the next step. It's like one door opens the next, the next, you step out, you share the word. One door opens the next door, opens the next door. But if you don't open that door, you're never going to see any of the doors. As you go, you have the, we are all on mission, the Lord tells his disciples. He said, preaching, as you go, preach the, go preach the kingdom, preach the gospel. Now we think, well, you know, I'm not a preacher, it doesn't matter. It's talking about spreading what you know. You, you know, so well, I, I don't know how to witness. Yes, you do. If you go to court, if you see an accident and you go to court, and they say, well, did you see the accident? You say, I don't know how, are you a witness? You say, I don't know how to witness. You just say, I saw the accident, you're a wit. You say, I, this is what it was. The same with the Lord. You don't have to have a book on it, that's great. But all you have to do is bear witness of what you know about Jesus in your life. What you know about Him, that's it. So it's not that, in, and if they were preaching then, the world needs it at least as much now, because now we're in an anti-phase, and so all the more we need to open our mouths and spread the word of salvation. Believers often live as if they have no power, afraid of everything. You know, the devil, the devil. Yeah, the devil's out there, and he has his schemes, but he's not the focus. We're aware of, we're aware of darkness, but we have to remember we are not under the darkness, and we're not on the losing side of darkness. We're on the winning side of darkness. Yeah. Messiah, you know, Messiah didn't command weakness. We may be weak in ourselves, but he commanded power. He commanded authority and power to his disciples. And notice what happens. First is the will of God. He says, go out, do this. Then he says, and you will be doing this and you will have this power. So the first thing is the will of God and then comes the power of God. First comes the will of God and then comes the miracles of God. You can't have the power and the miracle without the will. Not that you're going to be perfect, but the more you are in out of the will, the less power you're going to have. The more you're in the will, the more power, the more blessing. People say, you know, come and, you know, I follow the miracle, come to the miracle service. We're not supposed to be following miracles. We're following the Lord. The miracles are supposed to be following us. Follow the will of God and the miracles follow the power follows. He said, greater works will you do. The power is not about us, it's about him and it's a matter of authority. All authority, he didn't say some, he said all authority in heaven and on earth are given to me. It means all. Does, does it mean it's going to look like it? No. A lot of times it won't look, did it look like it for Paul? A lot of times he's in prison. No, it didn't look like it, but it still was the real thing. Paul was in prison, yet he changed the world more than, than the highest Caesar of his age. It's a matter of the real authority of God. Some believers think that they can say whatever they want and the authority follows. So no, the authority doesn't, the authority, uh, you know, in other words, I say this, I want this, or, no, I rebuke this. Or, you can rebuke anything you want, but if it's not God's will, it's not going to happen. But if it's God's will, yes, rebuke, I mean, God will rebuke, rebuke the enemy. If it's God's will, yes, command that, because it's God's will. There are people, you know, when the, when the apostles said, get up and walk, they knew it was God's will at that moment. You know, the stories of superheroes, you know, with superpowers, Superman flies and a flash runs and Plastic Man bends and all these things. Spider-Man is a spider. I don't know. But in God, it's all, of course, just a fantasy, but interesting. You know who most, you know, you know who wrote, who created most of those, those comic hero, superheroes? Jewish people. You know why? Because they're the people who need the Messiah. And without the Messiah, they still long for the superhero. Superman, Jewish, a Jewish guy. Even his name, Kalel, it's, it's Hebrew, you know. Batman, Jewish, Spider-Man, Jew, all that. The people who wrote. Because, but what it's telling you, no, there's a reason for that. Because what it's telling you, you have all those three superpowers linked to that. But the re that's the imitation, that's the fantasy. But the real one that they're longing for is Yeshua, is Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus. He's the real one. And he has real power. And the real power is given to you, his disciple. That's better. See, all that stuff is fantasy and special effects. But this is not special effects. 
This is the power of God and it's real. So he's giving that to you, true power. And so the disciples are the ones who are given the power. And if you're, alive, if you're a follower of the Lord today, you're his disciple. So I want to just look at a few of the powers he gave you right here. The first power he gives in the Greek is called therapio, which, which, which means the, it's the power of healing, of making whole, of, of making well what is broken. People in the world, broken. It's a broken world. It's a messed up world. You have been given the power of therapeuo, the power of healing. Now, does that mean everybody, you're a miracle here? Every time you say, it doesn't mean that, but it means that God will use you to bring healing. In His manner, in His will, as He wills in your life, and as He wills in people's lives. If you the same word, which means to heal, the power of healing, also means to serve and help people. Serve, or like waiting on tables. There's something, there's a connection between, between serving God and having the power of healing. But there's another word that comes from that, that power that God gives you. And the word is therapeuo, you can, you can hear it, therapy. The, you know, the world says you need therapy, you know. They made studies on therapy, and I'm not speaking for or against, but they, they made studies on therapy. They found out a third of the people got better. A third stayed the same, and a third got worse. And the third who got better might have gotten better anyway. We don't know. Now, I'm not saying there's good Christian counsel from the Word of God, but be careful. You know, there are many tenets of psychology that are opposed to the Word of God, so be careful. Don't just put your, your life in the hands of somebody who's giving you spiritual counsel. But we have a Messiah who's a healer. Better than therapy is to be with Messiah. He's, you want a therapist? He's your therapist. The love of God heals, really does. You don't want to see people getting together. You see people who are messed up. They come to the Lord and they really get into God. And, they, and, and, and you see them totally changed from what they were because God is our healer. The Son of God will arise with healing in His wings. The same word, interesting, therapeuo, power of healing, also can mean, be translated as worship. What does that mean? There's a connection between worship and healing. You want healing? Get into worshiping God. There's healing in worship. In fact, there's healing of getting your eyes off your problem. There's healing in getting your eyes off of yourself and getting lost in the love of God. There's a story I've, I've known about. It struck me from when I first heard it. I heard the guy share it. A guy who was totally mentally ill. And so he was diagnosed like paranoid, schizophrenic. And he was put on shock therapies years ago and all this stuff and nothing healed him. And he got saved and he still wasn't healed. And so finally he, he looked at the scripture, popped out at him. It said, put on the mind of Messiah. And he said, what's the mind of Messiah? The mind of Messiah is to be praising the Father. So he said, every day I'm going to take an hour and I'm just going to praise the Father. I'm not going to bring my problems. I'm not going to bring any of that. I'm not going to tell him what I want. I'm just going to get into praising the Father. And I believe about a year later, within a year, he was totally healed. Totally. To this day, he's a minister now. From that, the power of healing. Every believer, if you're, you're a believer, you are to in some way bring healing to someone else. If you are, you know, in some way, you, the effect of your life is to be healed. Sometimes it's a supernatural, physical healing, but it's other kinds of healings. But if you're an agent of healing, then that means you also have to have healing. Heal thyself, physician, you know, it says. Don't try to fix others until you fix yourself. At least, you know, the, the, you know, you've got the power of healing. The Bible says you've got the power of healing. So if you have the power of healing, it's for other people, but it's also for you. Let the power of Messiah bring healing to you because that's because it does. 
And I've seen that, and I've seen, I mean, we have seen all kinds of healing, and, and listen, we can't tell God what to do. I can't say that every time you want something, you're going to get that healing. I, I can say that God heals, and God blesses, and God gives you what you need, and the best way, whether it's through an, an immediate miracle, a long miracle, or a miracle that was something you didn't expect that was better than the miracle that you did in the long run. But we prayed for people, we've seen it right away, they got instantly healed. Now, it doesn't happen, doesn't happen all the time, but it happens. We've seen people who are, bl who are diagnosed blind and were healed. Like that. But, as, but the point is, it's not about that, because those miracles are all going to be, the people are going to die at one time or another. Okay? So physical healing is part of it, but it's a sign of the deeper healing that God does forever. So those healings are part of it, but they are not the, the main thing. The main thing is it's showing you the power of the healer that you have as your savior. The next second power that he said in there, it's the power of katharizo. All right, try it. <laughs> katharizo. I don't know, I think you're better at the Hebrew. Uh, <laughs> katharizo, Greek. Well, he said here, what does that mean? It means the power, literally, of cleansing. There's commercials, you know, our, our brand, we have the more cleaning power. Well, we're in Messiah. We have Messiah, and Messiah has more cleaning power. The power of Katharizo. He said, you shall cleanse the leper. Now that's a priestly act. Back then it was the priests who were linked to the cleansing of the leper. But basically it says on the day that the leper is healed, the leper would be healed. It's called cleansing, but it was also his healing. It was cleansing because they're cleansed of their impurities. They're cleansed of all the junk of leprosy. They're cleansed. So when it's healed, the priest will say, yes, he's clean. And they will then, they will then reinstate the one who was the leper. But Messiah takes it to another dimension. He doesn't just say, You're, okay, this person got healed. He, the, the leper was, was not healed, and the leper runs up to him, and he says, he runs up to him to touch him, I mean, to come close, and you're not supposed to do that as a leper. You're supposed to stay away from everybody. Runs up to him, and he said, he said, you can, you can heal me, Messiah, Jesus. You can make me clean, meaning, and he, he, he says, he's, if you're willing, and he, he said, I am willing, touches him, not supposed to do that, he's healed. So Messiah takes it to another level. The priest couldn't do that. The priest could just say he, they're healed. Messiah takes what is, what is unclean and makes it clean. And that's bigger. That's better. You know, because if you go to the supermarket, you'll see some things that say, this is kosher, this is not kosher, this is kosher, this is not kosher. And it says, some of them say, it's under the, this was kosher prepared under the supervision of Rabbi Shlomo Schwartz, you know, whatever it is. Well, well, rabbis can say, this is kosher, this is not. But we have the only rabbi in, in the universe who can take what's unkosher and make it kosher. Like us. You know what I'm saying? Messiah takes what is not clean and makes it clean. He takes lives that are not clean and makes it clean. He is the power of cleansing, katharizo. And that's all part of the power. Like when he takes somebody who's outcast, he takes somebody who's a prostitute, takes somebody, the power of restoration. It's the power, you know, the, the priests were in charge of washing. John the Baptist was born of the priestly line. He was in charge of the washings, the Katharizos, power of purifying purity to pronounce clean. This is also the power of forgiveness because it's making somebody clean. Well, God, Messiah is saying, you now have that power. This is the power that's even, that's the priestly power, but it's even greater than the priestly power. You know, the Bible says you're a priest. Well, you also have the power of the priest. It's the power to make unclean things become clean. It's the power of forgiveness. You know, those who should not, who don't deserve it, but you give it to them. You, to make them clean. You know, Messiah said to the, to, you know, he said, your sins are forgiven. And they said, how dare you say that to that man? Only God can forgive sins. And he said, okay, all right, God. And the guy was paralyzed on the floor, paralyzed, couldn't move. He said, okay, so that you might know that I have the power to forgive sins, get up and walk. 
and the guy gets up and walks. The point, and you say, wow, you know, the paralyzed guy gets up and walks. Everybody's amazed. But it wasn't about that. It was about the power to forgive sins. He's saying that's greater than this power. But that you might know, you know, you know when, when, you, when it says that the Lord forgives you, you may not see something, you may not feel something. Like if he, he just healed you of being paralyzed, you'd see it. Everybody would go, wow. But the greater power is him forgiving you. And it's, it's even more real. Even though you may not see him do it, you don't see something change physically. It's more important. And it's more real. That when you say God forgives you, when you say God forgive me, it's real. You can take it. It's more important than being paralyzed and getting healed. But the Lord says that's for you. But he says now you have that power too. Not only it's the power, you know, it's, it's the same word that's used in Hebrews 9, 23, when, it's, when it speaks of things being ceremonially clean, cleansed, so vessels could be used of God. Well, it says that if we are cleansed, we can be used for God's purposes. If, you get, if anyone cleanses himself, he will be or she will be a vessel of high honor and purposes. So God has a high purpose. Well, God has given you power to cleanse our people around you, to, to bring cleansing into them. And not that you can't force them, but you have the power. You're the power of your life is to make things that were unclean become, make situations that were unclean become clean. But it starts with you getting clean and me getting clean and we getting cleansed from God so we can be used to our highest calling, the power. You can't force people to be clean. You can't force people to do that. But you have a power from the Holy Spirit. You've got a power that moves things toward rightness, to cleansing. If you go with the Spirit, take situations that are, so, that, are, that are so messed up or so dysfunctional, and you've got power in it. You know, they, 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 you have power to take away things that are impure and become pure. Starting with the impurity in your life, you've got power to become pure if you will take it. They advertise on television... This gets the stains out. <laughs> Any good cleaning agent is supposed to get the stains out. Blood stains, mud, you know. So the, thing, the, the mother's there and the kids are running in the mud and gets the stains out. The power of Messiah is not just the power to put away sin. It's the power, it also gets the stains out. You see, because sin stains... Sin stains our lives, it stains emotions, it stains people's way of thinking, it's, the stain is guilt, the past. Well, Messiah has the, the power of Catharizzo is to get the stain out, not only the sin, but what the sin has done. Not only the sin, but the guilt and the regret, not only the sin, but all the messed upness that came from that sin. Though your sins be as scarlet, I will make them white as snow, the stain is gone. You've got a power from God, if you will take it, to be able to live a stainless life, a life with a stainless conscience. You have a guilty conscience? Listen, God uses guilt. It's okay to have guilt. If, it's tell, if you're doing something wrong, you want that oil light to tell you there's something wrong. You know? you know, when an oil light goes on, when something goes on in your car, you're going, okay, what's wrong, what's wrong? You don't like that feeling. You don't like, but it's a good thing that you have that. That's what guilt is. Not about that. Guilt is there to tell you something's off. That's not wrong. But if, you stay, if you're staying in guilt your whole life, there's something wrong. God wants your conscience cleansed. What's it say? In Hebrews, our, having our hearts, we can boldly go into the presence of God, having our hearts sprinkled clean from a guilty, evil conscience. We've got a power from God. You've got it if you want it. The power to cleanse the stain of bitterness and unforgiveness in your life. To cleanse the stain of rejection in your life. To cleanse the stain of, of abandonment in your life. To cleanse the stain of anxiety and fear and wounds in your life. To cleanse the stain of saying you're never going to be any good and you're always going to be a failure even in God. You have the power to cleanse that stain. Messiah, Messiah gets the stain out. And you've got the power to. What kind of lamb is the Messiah? What kind of lamb? A spotless lamb. Right? Passover. Spotless lamb. 
He is spotless so you can become stainless. That's the power of the Lamb. Use it. Use it. Note how many times in Scripture cleansing or forgiveness and cleansing is linked to healing and miracles. Your sins are forgiven. Rise and walk. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Be thou cleansed. Be made whole. That's the power that God has for you to use. Third power, or next power, the power, ready for this, the power of ekbalo. That's kind of, it's not so hard. Ekbalo. Kind of sounds happy. Ekbalo. What is that the power of? You know, there's a lot of talk about the enemy and a lot of talk about the darkness and all those things. And, and indirectly, a lot of times believers talk as if they're victims, you know, of people, yeah, but also of the devil and also of all the things that happen in their lives and what's going on. And what. But the Bible says, Messiah said to you, if you're his disciple, you have the power over the enemy to trample him. And the power is called ekbalo. What is that? Ek balo means, ek means out. Balo means to throw. Ek balo means you've got the power of kicking out. Casting out. Casting out. It's like the apostles where, where they came back and they were like amazed. Lord, the demons are subject to us. They couldn't believe it. I remember when, when uh, years and years ago, I'm um, sure... By, well, maybe in the early days of when I was, when I started. And we had somebody who had been, who got out, got saved out of dark, dark things. But at one point they started falling back into it. And they were acting strange and they were, I mean, and, and it was, I mean, it was dark. And, and we really, people, their friends came and said, we gotta, we gotta pray for this. We gotta, let's fast and pray for him. Because there's something, this is like demonic. And so they said, and then let's come over his house. So we came over. And I remember I came over, and I come to him, and he was kind of, kind of, he had been drinking, and this was just one of the sins. And I, I said, we're going to pray for you. And I put my hand on his, his knee, because we were all sitting around to pray, and he starts shaking, 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 back and forth, back and forth. He starts laughing, laughing, shaking, laughing. And I, I said, Lord, this has to be a prayer of casting out. And I'm praying, and I'm praying, and I'm and I, and I praying to, uh, to cast out whatever darkness this is. And he's shaking and shaking and shaking and laughing. And then the laughter starts, and then the shaking gets less and less and less and less until it's all gone. And it's peace. And he's healed of it. To this day. To this day. That's the power of Ekbalo. I remember when I was in, we were in Africa, and we were at the at the shrine of a of a high of a of a pagan high priestess woman who had been dedicated to the gods since she was a, a, a an infant, and I remember, you know, and, and I'm I'm we're leaving, and she's following us around, but she's keeping her distance. And someone comes up, and says, "No, I I gave her a Bible. She, first she refused it, but then she took it." I said, "Really?" I said, "Let me go up to her." And I had translators around. She had her attendants around, the high priestess, and and I and, and I said, finally, I'm talking to her and going on and on. And she's just she's finally. I just said, "Let me just ask." I said, "I said, do you want to receive Jesus?" She says, "Yes." So I pray and I make it a real long prayer and I say it was a prayer of Ekbalo. I said, Lord, and I make a long, I, I rebuke this, I cast out, I renounce, I'm not going to do this anymore, this, I'm out of all the darkness. At the end I look up and she is glowing with light. I mean glowing. We have a picture. She's glowing. At the end I said, you know, you don't have to go by these, this darkness anymore. You've got, a, you've got the word of God here now. You've got the oracles of God. He's going to speak to you. I, said, it's op I just opened it up, random, it opens up to the people who dwell in darkness have seen a great light. That was an ekbalo moment. You have authority by the virtue of God. Good always has the authority to drive out the darkness. There was a, a pastor who... who who was approached by a fortune teller. I mean, fortune tellers are into the occult, you know, and all that. Don't have anything to do with any of that stuff. But he, he, she, and he starts, she starts telling the fortune of the, of, of the pastor. And finally, the pastor says, okay, now I'm going to tell you your fortune. 
If you don't repent of this darkness, you're going to be dead. You're going to be judged. She ended up laughing. She ended up, she was murdered. It actually, real. it was a warning from God. In John 2, Messiah drove them out of the temple, the, 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 the corruption. This, the word that's used for when he drove them out is the same word, ekbalo. To, it's not just about demonic driving out. It's about the power over any evil and any darkness, anything that's not of God. We don't have a passive faith. You don't have a timid faith. You don't have a faith that accepts everything. You accept, yeah, we are to love everybody, but you don't accept darkness. You don't accept, you don't accept what Hitler was doing. You don't accept, you don't say everything. It's not. You accept, you, if you're going to love, you, if you're going to have light, you have to oppose the darkness. That means you have the power of ekbalo. That you don't have to put up with certain things. You can, you have the power to drive them out. To drive out darkness. And sometimes it might take more prayer. Because sometimes he says these things only come out by prayer and fasting. Some things may take more persevering. But you've got the power. You have the power to drive evil out. You have the, we have the power in our society to drive evil out. Now I'm not saying you could, we can't force people. We can't force laws and all that. But you've got power within this. Within the present darkness. You've got power to shine light. And make the darkness go away. Life by life. And whoever will hear you still have a greater power than the world. It's easy for believers to talk about it. But we have the, just, well this, this evil and this evil. You have the power to push away evil. And with all that's happening in the world, we need that power greater now. In the, in the days of Germany, you know, long before Hitler came, they came up with this way of approaching faith that they kept, here's the faith world, here's the pastor in your church, and then here's the rest of the world, keep them separate. Well, that opened the door for Hitler and, and the enemy. We are to have power, we are to be affecting power and shining light everywhere. You can't force people to come to God, but you have the power to drive out darkness. The children of Israel got to the promised land. What did they do? They had to drive out the giants. They had to drive out. You are born again. You're a spiritual child of Israel. You are to have the power to drive out giants. That means in your own life, you're not supposed to be living under giants, harassing that sin, that bondage, that fear, that intimidation. You're not supposed to be living under that. You're supposed to be driving it out. Amen. I'm not talking about people, but I'm talking about the sin that might be in people or around you. You have the power to draw. Light drives out darkness. Love drives out hate. I remember when we were early days, we, I went to a Bible study. I was like a year old in the Lord. And I remember the, it was a, at a pastor's house. And the, and the pastor's wife was praying with some other believers. Because right next to their house was this, this theater, this porno theater, XXX, triple X theater. And she said, we're just praying against that. This closes down. And she, while I was there, it closed down. And became a family theater. The nature of evil is to take over things that belong to you. The, the nature of evil, nature of the enemy is to try to take foothold in your home, in your walk, in your mind, in your emotions, in your life. He's always trying to take a foothold. And so you have to be strong about this. And you've got to get the power of Ekbalo to be able to say, get out. In the name of Messiah, get out of here. In the name of Messiah, you have no place and no authority over this, over my house, over my, my walk, over my calling, over anything. You have no authority, but in the name of Messiah, get out. Name of Jesus, get out. Get out, depression. Not supposed to be, not supposed to be ruling you. I'm not saying there are issues. Yep, maybe, and there may be healing, but it's not supposed to be ruling you. Get out, fear. I'm not supposed to be subject to fear my whole life. Get out that bondage, that sin that keeps coming out. Get out once and for all. Get into getting out. You know, some of you people would have liked to kick some people out of your house. But you're too nice, you never did. Get into, you can do this now. Get into kicking things out. The joy of kicking the things of the enemy out of your life. Get into the joy of it. Get out of here. Really. You know, it says, the Lord said, the Lord said, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Now, 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 he wasn't being literal. 
okay? He was saying that's if anything causes you to stumble, don't let anything jeopardize your walk with God, okay? But the word here is ekbalo, so it means get your eye out and throw it. Like this picture I'm giving you? It's hyperbole, but it's saying, it's saying you have the power to remove anything from your life that is not of God. Anything. You have the authority. That's a major thing you need. Major. And the last power is the power, I mean there's other things, but in what he just said, he commissioned you with powers. The last one is the power of Egiro. Try it. Egiro. You know what that means? That's the power of raising what is dead. Raising what is dead. Now I've heard mission stories of, re of real people, real things, of people who died and were, were, came back. I've seen it. I've, I've I, know, I, know, I, know I know a pastor who was literally in a coffin. They had buried him. They were burying him, and his, his in, I don't know if it was Haiti, and his father was a, came back from a, from a, like a, it was a minister, came back, and they were, they were having, they, they were burying him, and he, he said, no, he said, and he, praying and praying, oh, I'm not saying you do this, all, but it was God, he was praying, and he heard a cough, and he, his son came back to life, he's serving the Lord to this day. Peter, so it's not about the people, it's about God. Peter raised up, Paul Raise up the guy who fell asleep on his sermon. There's some preachers who wouldn't do that. And that's embarrassing anyway. You know, you're being raised from the dead. Okay, that's great. But the guy who's raising him is the guy who fell asleep on and fell out the window. You know, I wasn't sleeping. I was just in deep thought. Oh, no, you were sleeping. You fell out. You were dead. Did Paul know that he had that power? Well, it wasn't about him. But Paul knew that there was this power and it was God. The power of Egiro to take things that are dead and make them alive again. The world is fallen. The world has, has death on it. You have the power that goes against death. You got the power that is of life that overcomes death. You have the power to take a dead relationship that is of God and, and bring it to life. You have a dead marriage, bring it to life. You have the power of a dead walk, bring it to life. You have the power of a dead, a dead life, bring it to life. Lift up the fallen. People in your life are fallen. People are in a pit. you got the power, the word means to raise up. Also means to wake up. you got the power to wake up those who are sleeping. you got the power to wake up your own life. Maybe your walk has been kind of dead and you've been kind of sleeping. you got the power to say, wake up and rise up by the power of the power of Messiah to rise. I command my life to rise up. How do you watch Popeye when you're growing up? Come on. That's why you got messed up, it was Popeye. <laughs> but the thing is, Popeye, the time he'd be so, like, you know, he's all beaten and beaten and beaten and all that. And you're thinking, you know, and he can't get to, he's, there's no spinach, he can't get to, it's like, Popeye, why do, you, why do you keep leaving the spinach somewhere where you can't have it? And finally he kind of sucks it through his pipe and all of a sudden it goes up and he goes up. <laughs> it was spinach. You know, spinach. But that's spinach, and that is, I don't know if the people who came up with Popeye were Jewish, I don't know that. <laughs> Max Flesher, he might have been actually, but, but the point is, Messiah is the power that doesn't matter how hopeless, he's got the power to raise up. I mean, he's the one who, ri who rose up far bigger than anything you saw as a cartoon. He's real, and the power is that even when you're fallen, even if you messed up, and it's, you know, it's a matter of, Lord, I'm sorry I messed up. Okay, give it to God. Yes, but also now take the power of Egiro and rise up. I got the power to rise up. I got the power not to mess up again in that thing. I have the power not just to get back and stand and hope I don't fall again, but actually to move forward because I'm living in the resurrection power of Messiah. When Messiah rose out to bring this home, he said, all authority is given to me. All authority, therefore I give it to you. He gave you authority. The, whether you use it is the whole point. There may be, somebody is really strong, but they don't know they're strong, they're not going to live strong. If somebody's a superhero and they don't know they have the power, they're not going to have it. And same with you, because with you it's real. If a person doesn't use the power, if you don't use the power, you're not going to see it. Use the power. You can overcome. 
You know, in Star Wars, they said, use the force. Luke, use the force. Well, this isn't Luke, this is Matthew. But it said, use the force. But in that, again, that's a fantasy, but this is reality. This is what God promised you. Use the power. And it's not only power, it's authority. God has given you authority. That means He wants you to do it. He wants you to take authority over any darkness in your life, any darkness around you. He wants you to do that. You got the authority given to you. And He said, but He said, go. As you go, you'll have to walk in His will, get out in what He's called you, and you're going to start seeing this more and more as you do it. That's what He promised. That's what He did. And I've seen it. I've seen it. And if you're not experiencing it, you got to get going in God. Get moving in His will. Lord, I believe it and I'm going to start moving. I'm going to take a risk today. I'm actually going to tell the cashier that God loves her. I'm going to step out. I'm going to take a step. Take the first step. Walk in His will. And the power, the power will be given. The power of healing. The power of cleansing and making pure. The power of casting out, kicking out, giving an eviction notice. And the power of raising up. Go in His will and He will do it. God's called you as an agent of heaven on earth to heal the broken, cleanse the unclean, drive out the darkness, overcome the enemy, and raise up what is dead. Make it your purpose. It, the will of God is the power of God and the power of God is the miracle of God. Make it your aim. Walk all the more in the will that God has for your life. Live in His authority and the life you live will be a life of miracles. Amen and amen. Father, we praise you tonight and thank you tonight, Father, for your, the word and the power and what you have given to your people. So, Lord, we ask, Father, help us to apply this, Lord, in our lives. Lord, we want to live victorious. We want to live dynamically, each of us, Lord. Lord, we don't want to live in, in defeat. So, Lord, I ask right now, touch all of us. Lord, we want to live as your disciples. Lord, I ask right now, the power of healing to your people now and through your people now. The power of cleansing, making pure, making whole, making right what is not. The power of casting out, throwing out, being finished with. And the power of rising, raising up and rising. Father, we praise you, Lord, and thank you, Lord. And we commit even now. We're going to seek to do your will more than we have. We're going to seek to walk in your will more than we've walked. We're going to seek to do and walk in the Great Commission. Lord, for those of us who are not in ministry, we were going to rise to the calling in ministry. Father, for those of us who are not sharing your word when we go out, we're going to take a step of faith and we're going to step out. Lord, we're, we're make, we want to see your power and we want to do your will. Help us more and more, to, Lord, whatever it is that we have to bring into your will, we, we are committing to it, and whatever we have to put out, put out that's not your will of our life, we commit to it. Lord, we praise you. We praise you and bless you. Bless you. Lord, right now, as our eyes are closed, listen, stay in, in God's power. Commit to greater things now. But while you're, commit, while you're in God's presence, right now, if you're not sure where you're going to be a thousand years from now, if you're not sure, you need to know. Jesus said you must be born again. If you're not sure you're born again, you need to be. Jesus said you must be born again. So listen, if you're not sure you are, Jesus said there's only two roads. One road leads to eternal life, and that's heaven. One road leads to eternal separation from God. That's, that's hell. The Lord doesn't only wants you. He, he came for you. He, would, he gave his life for you that you would be saved forever. And that's what it's about. But if you're not born again, you're on the wrong road. Because he said you must be born again. And you can't enter heaven unless you're born again. So if you're not sure you are, you need to be. This is for your sake right now. doesn't matter if you're Catholic, Protestant, Jewish, whatever you are. It doesn't matter. Jesus said it. This is it. This is the word of God. It's about you and him. It's about your relationship with God right now. So if you're not sure you're born again, this is for you. Listen. If you're not sure you're right with God, maybe you have been born again, but you're not, life hasn't been right with God. This is for you as well. If you're not sure, listen. That means you need to get in. Because it means you're on the wrong road heading away from God. And that's heading to the wrong place. 
But here's the thing. You might say, well, how long do I have to get right? The answer is you've got one heartbeat. One heartbeat. That's the only thing standing in between you and eternity. So right now, if you're not sure you're born again, you need to be. That heartbeat can stop at any moment. And once it stops, that's it. You, don't, you can't choose anymore. That's eternity. So that's why the Bible says, now is the time. Every heartbeat you have, take it like God knocking on your heart. So, you, so don't say, I'll get right tomorrow, because tomorrow may never come. You might not have tomorrow. And even if you have tomorrow, you may not be open tomorrow, but you're open now. And God is speaking to your life right now. He's speaking to your heart. And he's saying, listen, I will not reject you right now. I will not turn you away, but you need to come right now. I'm not going to turn you away, but this is your moment. Don't miss the moment. Don't let it pass you by now. The greatest thing. So I say, well, how do I do that? How do I, how would I do it? It's the thing about being born again or getting back to God or, well, it's, it's not hard at all. It's easy, actually. Very easy, but you just need to mean it in your heart. He's right here and he's saying, come, now is your moment. With our eyes closed, we're gonna, it's this simple. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, if you will pray, we can happen with a simple prayer to say yes to the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes to my, Lord, I'm saying yes to my calling. Yes to your call on my life. Yes to your will. Yes to your love. From here on in, I'm going to follow you with all my heart. And Lord, come into my life and my heart. Forgive me. Make me new. The power of cleansing, the power of forgiveness, the power of healing. Come into my heart in every way. And I'm going to follow you as your disciple on a path of victory. Our eyes are closed. And, and the one who gave his life for you, that's what it's all about. And overcame death so you could be saved. Right now is your moment. Don't miss it. We're going to do it right now. Our eyes are closed. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, you can say it in a whisper. But say it. You can do it in a whisper, but say it. Mean in your heart. We're going to pray right now. Our eyes are closed across the sanctuary. Just repeat after me right now a very simple prayer to say yes to God. This is everything right now. If you're not 100% sure where you're going to be a thousand years from now, it means you're going to be the, you need to get into the right place right now is your moment. Maybe you have known God but you haven't been in His will. You need to get back. You pray too. And maybe God is calling you to higher ground as a disciple. You pray too. Make Him receive him in every part of your life let's pray right now our eyes are closed and this is your moment you don't don't worry about anybody else you're not going to hear them they're going to do it in a whisper and you too it's between you and it's you're going to do it to the lord let's pray right now just repeat after me as i do it up here just repeat after me i'm going to do it slow enough for you to be able to do it just repeat after me these words mean in your heart let's pray right now as you repeat after me these words Lord God, I come to you now and I say yes to you. Yes to your call. I say yes to your love. Thank you for loving me, giving your life, dying for my sins, rising so I could be saved. Thank you, Lord. From this moment on, I'm saying yes. I turn away from the dark. I turn away from the past and I'm turning to you. I'll follow you from this moment on. Lord, come into my life in every way. Come into my heart in every way. Give me power in every way to be victorious. And Lord, now I receive you. Forgive me of my sins. I receive the power of cleansing, the power of healing, the power of casting out anything that is not for my life, and the power from, of my life rising in you. I receive your love. I receive your presence in my heart. I receive. And now, Lord, thank you by this prayer and your promise, I can say, I am now blessed. I am free. I am new. I am your child. I am born again. I am saved. I'll be with you always. Lead me on. I am your disciple. Lead me on as I follow you as your disciple from this moment and all the days of my life. In the name, above every name, the name of 
my Redeemer, the Messiah, my Savior, Jesus. And I say, Amen and Amen. Our eyes are closed right now. Listen closely. Our eyes are closed. We're all in prayer. You prayed that prayer. It's the greatest thing you ever did. Or you prayed to come back. If it's your first time you prayed or anybody. Listen. If you prayed that prayer, and if that's the first time you really prayed that prayer, you're going to be doubly blessed because there's a gift for you as well. And you're going to be very blessed. There's a CD album. I mean, a CD, uh, a CD that's part of an album and also a book on, on the secrets of success in your life now with God. And it's going to be a free gift. But also, and I want to tell you how to get that in a second, but also... The Lord said, Jesus said, if you confess me on earth before men, I'll confess you before my Father in heaven. So, so you have to be able to, we need to be strong here while we are here right now. This is the moment. He wasn't afraid to die for you. You can't be ashamed to live for him. So right now with our eyes closed, we need to seal this together. There's a breakthrough and a victory waiting in your life. There's a breakthrough waiting, but we need to do this biblically. And that is, you can, the prayer can't just be words. You connect it with a st one step of action. So we're going to do it together very easy. It's going to be very quick, very easy, very simple. And everybody's going to be in prayer at the same time. So people are watching. Just me, a minister is here. That's it. I'm going to be doing it. So we're going to do this together. So number one, this is for your blessing right now. And you, we need to do it together. On top of it, it's also for the gifts. So, so we can get you the gifts as well. So if, it's, if you prayed that prayer for the first time and... Uh, and or if it wasn't your first time but you like those gifts as well um, or you need you want to talk to somebody whatever it is right now together here's what we're doing right now everybody who prayed as we prayed everybody who's that together right now just slip up your hand for Jesus just quickly slip up your hand for Jesus God bless you God bless you God bless you all I'm going to pray a blessing everybody's hand is lifted up everybody's lifting their hand Lord I ask your blessing on every hand that's lifted up have your way I ask for power I ask for victory I ask for new things right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everybody, please still keep your eyes closed. Now, except now, you guys who, who lifted your, who raised your hand, I want you to look up. There are some people up here. They're in charge of getting you the gifts. And also answer, you have any questions, they'll answer your questions as well. So I'm going to ask them in one second to come over to you. And just, you have friends who are with you. They'll do this with you. Don't worry about anything. Everybody's still in prayer. You don't want to miss getting the gifts. They're going to show you the gifts. They're right to your left. They're right where it says prayer. It's okay. And if it's your first time, I'll meet you right after that in the welcome center. So don't worry. Right now I want you guys, if you don't see anybody coming to you, look up. If you don't see anybody seeing you, just flag them down. Wave them down. Lift up your hand so they can see you. Get you the gifts and just slip out with them for a second. Take whoever you want. They'll go with you. It's easy. And they'll...